Hey, what's up my fellow modders? So I've covered mod chip installs using wires and pin headers on all versions of Xboxes in the past, and links can be found in those videos in the description. This time I'm going to do something a little different and show you how to do a quick solder install with a specific chip to a version 1.6 Xbox. Stay tuned. Tools and supplies are pretty basic, a precision screwdriver set, a soldering setup, as well as some other basic tools like wire clippers and a razor blade should have you all set up. As for supplies, just some 30 gauge Kynar wire, everything else showed is helpful but not needed. Links to all this can be found in the description. The Aladdin XT4034 mod chip is actually still available as of now on Amazon and eBay. Its specs are nothing short of basic, but it does what it needs to do, and that's bypassing the stock BIOS for a modified one. It has 256 kilobytes of space and comes pre-flashed with the Evox M8 BIOS, which has support for all versions of Xbox, so no need to worry there. Of course, if you wanted, you could reflash the chip to a different BIOS to do some further customization to the boot screen or changing to a BIOS that supports the RAM upgrade, but I'll be leaving it as is, at least for now. Before we tear into the Xbox, let's connect some points together. The BT pad to this unmarked pad, which is actually a ground. What this does is put the mod chip into an always on state. Originally, you would need to attach the BT and LT pads to points on the motherboard that get signal from the front buttons. Now, there really is no need to turn the mod chip on and off anymore because there isn't Xbox Live, so I wouldn't even bother with it. A little tip for these short runs is to actually just use a leg of a resistor as I'm doing here. Once that's all done, we can move on to tearing into the Xbox. There are 6 Torx screws on the bottom that hold the top in place, 3 Torx that hold the DVD and hard drive caddies in, 4 connectors to remove, then you're on to removing the motherboard, which has 10 screws and 5 connectors. The goal here is to get the motherboard out, as we need to do some things on the bottom. But first, let's focus on the LPC area. I find it easier to first add some solder to fill these holes. Some motherboards will actually already be filled, but in my case, they're not. So I'm gonna fill these eight holes that the mod chip requires. I actually miscounted here and filled an extra two, but that's not a huge deal. After this, you will need to position your mod chip on top of the LPC like so, and start blowing the solder on. I attach both ends first to keep it lined up. Now, this method is by far my least favorite, and the PCB on these chips is really thin making this method kind of a pain. I'm guessing the only reason you'd want to do this install is to save on some space. Even if it is only a few square inches, sometimes that can make all the difference in a unique build. All of your connections can be visually verified and should look a little something like this. I recommend using flux for this process as it makes flowing the solder much easier. And even though mine is a no clean flux, you should take some isopropyl and clean it up anyways. Now that the chip itself is installed, we need to do an LPC rebuild. Microsoft cut the leads to the LPC port to help combat the modders, but that didn't stop us. So we need to bring our attention to the underside of the LPC port. So here's a nice diagram to follow to do your LPC rebuild. It was made by the now split mod group that went by Team DMS. They are the creators of the Xbit mod chip, so thank you for that. I like this particular diagram the best, as it actually shows you what you're connecting. Knowing more is always better. So for the the LPC rebuild itself, I just used some 30 gauge Kynar wire and I used a small bit of resistor leg to connect the short run, like I did with the mod chip. You need to take care not to overlap the wires. I've seen people say it will cause some weird glitches, but I honestly have no clue, so why test it? Mine definitely isn't the most efficient as it wastes more wire than necessary, but it gets the job done and it looks pretty decent, and that's what matters. Make sure and double check all your connections, clean off any leftover flux, make sure your isopropyl has evaporated, and put your console back together. Now, it would be smart to test it before actually putting every screw back in, but I ignored that part. Go ahead and connect your power and AV cables. If you're greeted with the ominous red glow from within, then you're almost there. Just power on your TV, and during boot, if you see the Evox X symbol in the corner, then you have successfully mod shipped your Xbox. From here, you want to get a hold of Hexen Installer or Auto Installer Deluxe, which are available online. Those allow you to install custom dashboards, which have all sorts of custom skins. You could even make your own skins. The possibilities are limitless now that you have a modded Xbox. 
so go get inspired and have some fun. Big shout out to all the modders out there, past, present, and future, in the OG Xbox modding scene. Also, if you're wondering where to get these installers, just Google Hexen installer and bam, here it is. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, leave a like, consider sharing it with a friend, and subscribe for more modding goodness. Still taking recommendations on stuff you guys want to see. I also love seeing your mods. You can follow and share them with me on Twitter at TechnoOnTop. Until next time, peace.